I would go with three body paragraphs um, for the simple fact that you want to make sure you have enough behaviors that are kind of validating your reasoning. Um, I think Byron asked about, like, can I kind of qualify? Or I might not agree with behaviors early on, but it starts to kind of make more sense later, or, or it could kind of be like a vice versa type thing. Um, but for body paragraph number one, for body paragraph number two, I want to be able to get behaviors in both of those for sure. So Holden behaviors, Holden behaviors. Um, and by behaviors, we mean like specific examples that would be taking place. Anyone have a number in mind as to how many you think would be reasonable to get for each body paragraph? Yeah, I'd say at least two. Um, and depending how it's going and, and what's happening, you know, you might have a paragraph where, come on, where are you? There we go. You might have one where you are able to get, you know, three in, or you might have some that are going to be in close proximity um, where you can sneak in another one. But I would say if you have at least two, that means grand total. Now you have four behaviors, four, four specific examples um, that you are taking a look at that is going to be able to explain why you find that behavior to be reasonable or not. Um, so at the very least, I'd say two body paragraphs where you have those behaviors in there. Um, and depending how you could organize those behaviors into different ways, you might have first body paragraph, and again, not me telling you you have to do this, but just ideas. You might have um, physical things that he actually does, and then there might be like mental um, behaviors that, that he's partaking in that you may or may not agree with. You could have one dealing with interaction with other people. Um, you could have another one dealing with the spots that he has to himself. You could have um, behaviors that you think he is harming himself. You could have behaviors where you think he is affecting other people in, in a negative way, um, or whatever the case may be. Um, you might focus on a series of behaviors that happens in close proximity, hotel scene, something like that. Another paragraph, they might be able to spread out. Uh, in theory, it would be nice if they kind of progressed in chronological order, depending how you set those things up into topics, so that may or may not be able to, to happen. So, like, what would be like a specific um, behavior of him? Like, like, what would be like just one? Well, what, if, what, what, um, what's something that he did that you think, not saying that you have to disagree with it, but what would be some troubling behavior on his part? Uh, getting a prostitute. Okay. Drinking. Well, let's stick with the prostitute. Oh, okay. I thought you just wanted to be around him. <laughs> what would be some details? What would, because let's, let's put it this way. If you have been living and breathing in this classroom for the last two weeks, you know that Holden's got a prostitute. Really? <laughs> oh, so you're going, Holden makes some unwise decisions. For example, he hires a prostitute. Yeah, okay. Well, what would be some details about him? Why is it so troubling?
So where folks will get into trouble, Holden is a phony, Holden lies, Holden over-exaggerates, Holden does dangerous things. Well, when does he do it, what does he do, those would kind of be the details that you would want to get into. Okay. So depending upon you know the behavior that you choose, so I'm certainly going to determine the specifics. Um, we're not going to go over every single scene. What would be other things of troubling behavior of his? Holden drunkenly calling Sal, Sally at the phone in the middle of the night. Okay. How's that conversation go? Like, pretty well. No, no. I'd <laughs> well, say it was overall eight. <laughs> <laughs> What did Holden like? What did Holden say he was going to do when he makes that? Call? I'll be yeah, over. Or we, right? we're gonna and like he kind of goes to the Elmer Fudd. Are we gonna twin the tweed? You know, kind of. But those are the <laughs> details then that start to take shape with it. Um, after Maurice, you know, comes back for his money. Remember what that amount is. If we're going with that example, you know. Holden has some dangerous and violent thoughts. This is true, but you would want to then get into the detail of what those violent thoughts are and, and what. It was ten dollars. No, it, he was gonna pay five, <laughs> but then didn't the guy come back and say it was ten? That's ten dollars. I'll let you figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, she wants like I understand he wants to put Holden's behavior into both paragraphs, and then like on the second part of the paragraph, if you want us to explain the scene, is that like this? I would say this is where your decision kind of, well, and, and along with these, um, and I think we know this, but just to, to double check, you're certainly going to mention the behaviors, and then you're going to, like, judge the behavior. Uh, you know, is it reasonable or is it not? So we, I want to make sure that that part does get uh, reaffirmed. The decision then, Allie, that, that you would have to make, it, and Jake was kind of alluding to this. Um, Jake, you said originally body paragraph two, but we can make this body paragraph three. What was your idea to do? Um, explains this behavior. Okay, so if we, there we go. I wonder why they're like, these are getting nubby. <laughs> Significance to whom? This is important. Salinger. Salinger. Which means my focus up here is going to be Holden. I'm looking at his behaviors. I'm looking at his behaviors. But now I'm coming over here to Salinger, and I'm essentially answering the question, you know, why should this matter? Like, what is the point that Salinger is trying to convey to communicate? What is the worst possible answer? I think we said this yesterday. To make his book more interesting. Don't write that, Emma. Please don't write that. Paper will go in the litter box. And I'll still give it back to you. Have you done that before? Not yet. <laughs> but as you get older, you get crazy. You more knee-jerk reactions start to happen. So I see that one getting closer. Um, so you could absolutely do this, and I have no problem with it, and it's not that, Jake, you did this, why did you do it that way? This would be perfectly fine. Um, anyone have a concern about making this a separate body paragraph? Because I, I feel like there's going to be one main concern that people are going to have. Like, go back and reference all your examples again. It could get really wordy. You, I wouldn't say you have to. Now, remember, in the first body paragraph, I mentioned this, this, and this. If, um, say, your first grouping ended up being lies that he has, and so we do have the, the Mrs. Morrow, um, we have lies that he's mentioning to other people. I wouldn't have a problem if in that third body paragraph you went back to saying his lying behavior or his dangerous behavior, because you've already established what those behaviors are. Um, but yeah, I, I still see the point where you're going to go back to referencing things that you already did. 
Um, so it could get a little repetitive, it could get a little bit wordy. More words means more time. More time means less time you know, that you have to actually get everything together. So time could be a little bit of an issue. The nice thing about time, you do now have at least an idea as to what you can write in 40 minutes when you have brainstormed. Case in point, you just got a, DB, a, a DWA back. Um, and I don't remember the order in which everyone finished throughout the day. I had some people finishing with 15 minutes left in class. They could have written more. Um, maybe they have any more ideas and they stopped when they should have stopped. Others, you know, you were going right up to the bell. So if you're going right up to the bell, you had an intro, conclusion, and two body paragraphs, this model might not work well for you because you're, in order to do that, you might have to sacrifice from some other places. Some people did write lengthier introductions, I think, for, uh, for the Tuesday um, TWA. And it's not that they were poor introductions by any means, but if I'm going to put my emphasis and time on the part of the essay, it's going to be less you. It's going to be the body paragraph. So if you're going, well, I take out these two sentences, I take out these two sentences, that gives me four more, wow, I really could have done something with those four sentences. You're a little bit more aware of that. Um, this would be perfectly fine. What would be a solution? paragraphs is all that you think time will permit knowing that you still need to have two body paragraphs devoted to Holden's behavior. And you could take the significance and write the significance of the first body paragraph and the first body paragraph and same with the second. Does that make sense? So I would take this and I could put it there, and then I could, well, uh, got to put that one together. You could do that. At which point, you either don't have a third body paragraph, or if you have a lot of time and ideas and you can write a lot, and some of you can, you could even do that three times, you know, if, if you wanted. Um, I would say that this is probably the more sophisticated way to do it. That does not mean that if Jake goes with his method, he can't get higher than a six, but if he does the same thing with two body paragraphs, he gets an eight. I'm not trying to send that message whatsoever. I think this is more sophisticated in the sense that the, the fear that Byron had about repetition and saying the same ideas and kind of going back to them, you eliminate that. The fear would be if maintaining a specific focus is difficult for you, you got a lot of moving parts going on in one body paragraph. I think it makes logical sense to ex explain his behavior, um, give the examples, go into at least to judge the behavior and explain the significance, but those are a lot of tasks to do in one body paragraph. So if you're worried about maintaining focus and consistency throughout, the three paragraph model might work better. Um, if, uh, if you think you can judge, do all those things in one paragraph, and then repeat and do it again, this would be perfectly fine. I don't have a preference. I think this has a higher ceiling, you know, as to it. it can really go well. But again, that doesn't mean that Jake's model can't get eight to nines. It absolutely can. Um, but I, I think Jake's model that he mentioned if you're worried about staying on task, it might make it a little bit easier that you know you're going to hit all those parts. Um, a concern would be, I do body paragraph number one, I do all those things. I'm doing body paragraph number two, I run out of time, I never get to explain the significance of it. That would kind of probably come back to bite you a little bit. Byron, did you have? Okay. It wouldn't be great to do like four body per paragraphs with one behavior. I don't think you're going to have the time to do it, you know, no, number one. Um, the, I, I, I like having at least two because that's, that's proving development, yeah. you know. Um, if, if you had a behavior where, you know, this one's lying, this one's violent, this one is affecting someone else, and this one's just a petty stupid decision on, on his part, I bet there's, there's some kind of top that okay. kind of link those things together. So I would try to go with, with at least two. Okay. Um, theoretically, no, there's nothing wrong with it, but I think you're just going to get kind of like short little clusters yeah. as opposed to a developed idea. Um, 
if you went with that model and you explained the significance in each one, then you know Byron's fear of getting repetitive, it's really going to start to get repetitive, and this is why it's significant to J.D. Salinger for the fourth time. Yeah. Um, if if you went with say Jake's method, body paragraph one behavior, then another behavior, then another behavior, then another behavior, significance. That significance paragraph is going to dwarf those behavior paragraphs, and now it's just going to look weird. Okay. And that's why this is hard. It's not an easy path. You know, we can break it down where you could go. Well, that seems to make so much sense, but you know, there's a difference between looking at it and going, yeah, I can do that, and then actually doing that. Again, if you have to include like the significance as a whole of both those behaviors, because you do behavior judge explain, behavior judge explain in one paragraph, like then you're not really repeating yourself too much. Or would you suggest like keeping the behaviors, the judging, and the significance all together? What was that first part? Like, do you have to go in that? Like, would you recommend going to all the behaviors in that paragraph first, then judge all of it, and then explain the significance? Like, do that? Yeah. I, I think that has the potential to be the most cohesive, or the okay. more cohesive of the two structures. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this because of the way you've written your essays or anything like that. My fear would be. If if I if Mr. Kane has said I have a tough time maintaining my focus when I've done my great draft essays or mm -hmm. things seem kind of disjointed, this could get very disjointed very quickly yeah. because there's a lot of different parts to mm -hmm. it. If if you're really good with transition words, if you're good with segues, you know, spell it out. But if you're good with doing them, this can work out very okay. very well. Um, the and I don't know if this was your question or not. The significance in both these paragraphs could absolutely be the same thing. Oh, okay. If you do this method, you're not saying that there are two different sig significances behind mm -hmm. it. This does give you the freedom to say there are two main yeah. significant reasons for it, and these behaviors link with that one type of significance, these behaviors link with that other type. Okay. So it does give you the, the flexibility to do that. Um, but it's not wrong if actually has the same type of significance and reinforces that twice. I mean, you did that with your a, a rhetorical analysis. You do that every body paragraph because you have the same argument throughout, and you are reinforcing, reiterating okay. that argument. So there's there's no problem with that. If you go, and I guess since I brought this up, if you went with two different significances, that was weird to say that. You're almost now looking at a triple thesis. Okay, yeah. Which talk about a potential to blow up. What the heck am I writing about? By the time you get to the conclusion, that, that could be that could be a problem. Um, I am a big fan of keeping it concise and having clarity. Um, now, you still need to include the details, and that doesn't mean you're writing public graphic sentences about holding like Sally. Sally's her green. Um, you know, that that's not clear, that's basic. Um, but if you if you have too many moving parts, okay. it's nuts. So when we judge, do you want us to judge for specific behavior? Like if we were to do like something like visible, like whenever he like punched out the garage and like got in a fight with um, would you want us to like judge punching out the garage, judge punching like getting the fight, or do you want to judge? Either way, which I know is everyone's least favorite answer. Um, if, if the behavior, if the reason as to why you would judge them as both being reasonable or unreasonable is the same, there's no reason why you can't judge them both then after you introduce both behaviors. If if you're dealing with two things of, of you know violent reactions and you think you know that that Holden's um, reaction to punching out the windows isn't appropriate because he you know, he should be able to talk to someone about this problem more so than, than punching out the windows. But the reason why the behavior isn't warranted with straddle deer is because you can't make knee-jerk reactions and just punch someone and get upset at them. If the reason why you don't judge them as being the same is different, then yeah, I would I would do it separately. Um, I, uh, I You could theoretically go, his behavior of punching out the windows is justifiable. His behavior of punching Warren is not justifiable. Um, 
I think that gets to be kind of in that danger zone then of I got too much going on, am I all keeping it, you know, tying this together. If you did want to view some behaviors as being reasonable, some not, I kind of go with what Byron was saying where, you know, look at early examples and then look at later examples. And this is all it would make sense. If there's a, the, the area honestly that I would expect people to um, struggle with the most is going to be explain the significance. Because you have to, because the, the answer to that significance isn't necessarily within the pages. It's what you know about Salinger as a person, and you have to now incorporate that into, you know, his words and his characters and all that kind of stuff. Um, someone asked me in, in home room, is it fair to say that, that Salinger, you know, had some, not mental illness, but mental challenges? Yeah. <laughs> He was in World War II. I don't, I can't imagine anyone who was like really there involved in World War II who would not be having some mental challenges before. Um, I mean, Salinger said to a friend, and, and this is terrible, apologize, but he, he said, you don't get the smell of burning flesh out of your nostrils. It stays with you forever. Um, yeah, that would scar him. And, and, you know, before he goes to World War II, he is social, he, he is, um, you know, urbane and suave and, and all those uh, language enrichment terms. What's the third one? Yeah, there, thank you. Uh, and not that that all completely went away uh, upon him coming back, but there's certainly a change in, in perspective. Um, yeah, didn't talk to Salinger. I don't know this for, for, for fact. I would assume that Salinger probably wished that things could go back to the way they were. I think Holden wishes things could go back to the way they were. That would be a link that would kind of put them together. So, you know, it's, it's, it, and something like that is different than going, Holden was bad in school. Salinger was bad in school. Salinger was saying school was bad. Um, I think that gets to be a, a little too general slash shallow, you know, and, and not in the for reason, um, but there's, there's not that depth to it that you can kind of start to validate um, that you could with some other things. Um, Holden's great at growing up, I think, for a variety of reasons. I think you could argue Salinger's afraid of growing up, you know, for a variety of reasons. So the the more, I hate saying sophisticated because it makes it sound like it's more difficult, um, but, but the more sophisticated or the, or the more layers there are to your significance, I think that's that has the better chance of proving your understanding. But regardless of which model you go with, you, you can still do all of these things. Um, you're not writing less if you do this one. You're not technically writing more so far as ideas if, if you do the other one. I think it's more of the structure of the arrangement of what, what works for you. Other questions? Again, we said yesterday, and, and I don't remember who mentioned it, but the first thing that I think you want to figure out, what's your significance? Then from there, figure out the behaviors that relate to that significance. Then you can figure out how you would judge them. Um, if you choose behaviors and then you choose significance and there's not anything that links those things together, that's going to be a disjointed essay. So I think the, the, the brainstorming, the preparation is probably going to go in a different order than, uh, than how you actually do things. So this is recorded. Yesterday is recorded. You might want to check that out again Sunday night when you're going, what the heck were we talking about? It doesn't make sense anymore. You know, go back and look at it. It might, might kind of help some stuff. Good thing I recorded yesterday. So you know. The prompt you can write on, I'm assuming you're going to use that prompt on Monday. I'll have a few extras, but it'll just be like what we did on Tuesday. You, know, you come in, great, it'll be out. You start writing, you don't have to wait for me to, to do anything. Organized chaos is what a lot of problems end up end up handling. Yeah, if you want to take a look, and I, I would say looking at it so far as details, you know, did you get enough?